A rainy day in Donashi, the sun was setting low. Twas time to cook the evening meal and goodly food bestow. Twas Geoffrey squatted by the fire, turning legs of meat. But droplets fell about his head and quenched the fire's heat. This will not do, Lord Geoffrey cried. I cannot cook this way. I need to raise a goodly roof to keep the rain away. He called the men of Donashi, they raised a roof on high, and Jeff again sat down to cook, his head and body dry. But now the wind and fury whipped and whistled through the fire. It sputtered, dimmed, and went quite out. Their hopes for food retired. This will not do, Lord Geoffrey cried. I cannot cook this way. I must have walls both strong and firm to keep the wind at bay. He called the men of Donashi, and quick to work they set. They raised four walls around the fire, the wind no more a threat. Lord Jeff again sat down to cook, but quickly stopped anew. The fire rose, and then it fell. His cooking went askew. This will not do, Lord Geoffrey cried. I cannot cook this way. For meat to be most perfect done, the heat must never sway. The women wise of Donashi had saved their gold and jewels. They knew that Jeff deserved to have the best and finest tools. They pooled their gold and silver coin and bought a precious thing a metal stove of constant heat to tame the fire's swing. The cooking now progressed apace, each piece was perfect through, but now another problem rose as extra meat accrued. The cutlets tumbled from the stove as Geoffrey plied his hand. For simple folk of Donashi, the order was too grand. This will not do, Lord Geoffrey cried, I cannot cook this way. I will not have my cooking wrought, my efforts all betrayed. They pondered then, in Donashi, and looked to mountains high, where snow and ice prevent the spoil of victual supplies. They sent their men upon the peak to gather up the snows, and place it into sturdy chests, the rotting to oppose. The meat and grains from torrent fell from stove to mouth again, the extra stored within the chest, the freshness to sustain. But now another problem rose as Geoffrey cooked and cooked, for as a heaping bundled mass the sturdy kitchen looked, this will not do, Lord Geoffrey cried. I cannot cook this way. I must have neat and tidy shelves to cook without display. The clever men of Donashi set forth with saw and wood, and after barely moments passed, the goodly shelving stood. The women folk of Donashi, when they had ate their fill, would gather up the pots and pans to face the river's chill, and though their laughter echoed as they knelt beside the shore, it was a long and trudging walk that left them stiff and sore. This will not do, Lord Geoffrey cried. I cannot cook this way. I will not watch my ladies fair enduring this display. He set the men of Donashi to work with metal clamps, to build a sink with water clear for washing in the camp. How happy were the women folk upon their next return to see the gift that Jeff had made to save them from concern. But now it was the women folk who quietly complained. For all the joy their kitchen brought, the wolves and roof were plain. This will not do, the ladies cried. We cannot live this way. We will not have our kitchen mocked by all along the way. So all the folk in Donashi set forth without complaint. With every hand upon a brush, they laid a coat of paint. One coat and then another laid, the roof a gleaming red, and blew the walls on every side. <laughs> this was no simple shed. They drew a duck above the door, a sign of warmth inside, and all who passed would shout with joy to see it open wide. So ends the tale of Donashi, their kitchen of acclaim, and if you sit within the walls, you'll surely say the same.